here to tell you about my new product from my pillow towels that actually work watch this absorbency test here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought here's one of my towels with the nice design i don't know if you can see this but you could line a swimming pool with this i mean this is crazy get rid of it towels that actually work what a concept. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know you can get our six piece My Towels, regular $69.98, now only $29.98. Or you can save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Also, we have bath sheets, bath towels, washcloths, hand towels, and so much more. And the best part, with your promo code, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all my towels. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new product, My Coffee. I get products all the time from entrepreneurs for my new platform, mystore.com and when i tried my coffee for the first time i was blown away it is the best coffee i've ever had in my life i spent the last four months doing my due diligence and this family-owned business micromanages every step from the fields to the cup to ensure the best quality coffee you're ever going to have it starts with the beans that are grown in honduras honduras's volcanic soil and humid climate make the perfect growing conditions for coffee plants, which produce the best beans ever. Then each batch is tested for its aroma, taste, and other aspects to meet the highest standards in the coffee industry. And after that, it goes into production, which is all done right here in the USA. It's like you're getting that small batch specialty coffee, but delivered right to your front door. So go to mystore.com or call the number on your screen, use the promo code and you'll get your very own My Coffee for 25% off. You guys all know that I've traveled the country for the past year and a half. I've stayed in hundreds of hotels. I've tried every coffee out there. Well, some of the coffees have that terrible aftertaste, some that leave me jittery or I get an upset stomach. Well, my coffee is different. It's the richest, smoothest, best coffee I've ever had. My coffee comes in a variety of flavors. You get them ground or whole bean, plus it's certified organic and non-GMO. I guarantee it'll be the best coffee you've ever had. So go to mystore.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code and you'll get my coffee for 25% off. And I'm going to give you deep discounts on all my store products. That's mystore.com. It's my new platform for USA entrepreneurs. Please order now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. The Iowa caucuses are set to begin one hour from now, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central Time. We head to Iowa for the very first votes of the cycle at long last voters, not the pundits, the pollsters, or the savants are doing the speaking for themselves. These Iowa caucuses tonight, the first expression of the will of the people. Next comes New Hampshire, and then we're underway for the 2024 primaries. Tonight, former President Donald Trump is the clear frontrunner by a wide margin. The latest Des Moines Register NBC News poll released last week shows Trump being the first choice of half the voters. The real clear politics average gives President Trump a winning margin of a remarkable 33%. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley has climbed into second place in Iowa. She leads Florida Governor Ron DeSantis by a whole 4%. The Iowa caucus is also said to be the most physically demanding and challenging in decades. Iowa weather is uh, certainly uh, not helpful to these caucuses. Temperatures across the state are below freezing. The National Weather Service in Des Moines predicting bitter cold tonight, life-threatening conditions throughout the night. The weather could have an effect on the vote and the turnout, of course. Regular caucus growers, especially older ones or those with younger children, may be deterred from going to the caucus. 
we'll uh, we'll monitor that uh, for you throughout the evening. We'll be watching the caucuses carefully and reporting to you on the latest. We'll be bringing you all of the analysis of the final tally here tomorrow when we have an official winner. In Georgia, meanwhile, Fulton County District Attorney Fannie Willis has essentially admitted to allegations that she had an affair with her colleague, her special prosecutor, if you will, Nathan Wade. Willis paid Wade over $600,000 to work as her special prosecutor in her office while she developed her case against President Trump. She apparently had a little more help from the Biden administration in bringing those charges against Trump in the form of a $14.6 million Department of Justice grant. Here Fanny was over the weekend in church addressing the allegations against her. I expect black women to be perfect and save the world. The Lord is completing us. We are not perfect. We need your prayers. We need to be allowed to stumble. Sounds like a confession, doesn't it? And a very direct one at that, except the part about black women aren't perfect. Quote, end quote. Good to know, but it's not as though anyone is perfect. Fanny blaming high expectations for clearly her self-made problems. And then Fanny turned to a defense we've become all too familiar with over the years. She said those accusing her of impropriety are, you guessed it, they're racist and they're sexist. Oh Lord, they are gonna be mad when I call them out on this nonsense. First thing they say, oh she gonna play the race card now. But no God, isn't it them who's playing the race card when they only question one? How come God, the same black man I hired, was acceptable when a Republican in another county hired him and paid him twice the rate. Oh, y'all ain't hear me. Why is the white male Republican's judgment good enough, but the black female Democrats not? Well, the left always accuses you of what they themselves are guilty of. Our friend Dinesh D'Souza had, I think, the best characterization of Fannie Willis's remarks. She sounds, he said, like a televangelist who's been caught with her pants down. Meanwhile, the caucuses are getting underway at the top of the hour. The big issue in Iowa, like the rest of the country, the economy, immigration, Biden's wide open border, and more foreign wars. Joining us now, a Marine combat veteran. He worked in the Trump Treasury Department, the Trump Commerce Department. He's a national security expert as well, Adam Korzanewski. Adam, great to have you with us here on Lou Dobbs tonight. Uh, welcome, and let's let's start with, if you will, where this economy is. Uh, we're looking at a, a $34 trillion national debt. We're looking at $2 trillion deficits, and Bidenomics tells us all that everything is just hunky dory when it comes to fiscal policy. Your thoughts? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny when we were leaving the Treasury Department, you know, we're doing the transition with the Biden team. We were warning them about the inflation bomb that was coming and they did nothing about it. They didn't uh, really uh, rally the, uh, the wagons. They didn't really get anything done with it. And we're how many years into the uh, Biden administration? And it still hasn't been addressed adequately. And all they want to do is continue to spend money on social programs and uh, paying off their voter base. Well, you can't you can't blame uh, Joe Biden too much. He's gotten away with uh, talking about all of the uh, all of the student debt, the student loan debt that he's going to forgive. Uh, he he did uh, get stopped by the U.S. Supreme Court, but it didn't stop him for long because he doesn't really care about courts and law and that sort of uh, silly thing that is so passe in America right now. Uh, he, this is a president who has left the border wide open. Uh, he's turned over that border, in fact, to the Mexican drug cartels. No one wants to put it that way. They just say he's got an open border policy. He's got a cartel. A Mexican drug cartel policy is what he has. Uh, and it is a Chinese communist policy because they're manufacturing all the fentanyl that the Mexican drug cartels are bringing into every state in the union. Uh, 
the uh, the economic impact of bringing in 10 to 12 million illegal immigrants in your judgment adam uh, because that's what the estimates are for how many people have entered this country illegally in the last three years under this administration yeah so when i worked at the census bureau when i was at the department of commerce and you know this is one of the big problems is how do you track so many people who are coming into this country illegally there, it's there's not like there's a central database but we're already seeing in a lot of the major urban centers with social services being crippled. You know, they, they're shutting down schools in New York City in order to house illegal aliens. It's insane. Like we're, we're coming up to a 1970s style uh, urban crisis with uh, fiscal management of these places. It's gonna cascade into the states and then it's actually it's the federal government if we're not careful. And this is all about binomics. Uh, this is his, Corporate donors who want unlimited uh, low-cost wage, uh, wages, uh, salaried workers, all that, um, legal and illegal. And uh, what they're getting is what they basically, what, what we've all been warning about for years is um, the unintended consequences of overloading the system. Our systems are grossly overloaded, and we need to do something quick in order to mitigate that. And one of them is enforcing the border. Adam, I, I agree with you. We've got to do something about it. But when you say you add the word quick, there's nothing quick about what happens with this administration when it comes to rational policy. Uh, there, there is literally no way that this administration is going to say to the cartels, you know, that deal we made so that you could run rampant, you could traffic children, you could uh, uh, smuggle in drugs by deadly drugs in whatever quantity you want, send it where you want. Uh, I mean, they're just not going to turn back that uh, border to this guy, uh, in my opinion. So we we know we're going to have a continued flood of uh, low-skilled, low-education workers coming into this country from God knows where, uh, and they're going to. They're everybody's now in the Biden administration. They're asking private citizens to house them in their own homes. I mean, this is madness, and everybody is sitting around thinking, you know, as, as if this is just a normal development. The countries just open their borders wide, do business with the drug cartels, and there's no consequence. Uh, your thoughts? Right. Well, you know, just talk about historical parallels, you know, real quick. Like, the everybody likes to compare Biden to Carter. I actually think uh, comparing him to Johnson is more appropriate. You know, you have this whole idea of scientific progressivism, you know, where that they, where you could like manufacture like a new Soviet man style uh, out of out of uh, imperial decree from the uh, from the government, and that's what they're trying to do. Like everything from like you said, like uh, trying to house illegal aliens in people's homes. You know, uh, I mean, there's a linguistic and cultural barrier there. Like uh, the Anglos here in the uh, in the Hispanic world are culturally different. That's like a distinction that's unique about that. It's insane, but like this is like this is where the progressive agenda starts becoming. To your words uh, earlier, when, when you're speaking with Peter, uh, to Marxism, this is where this is where you start seeing the social engineering start taking place. And that's what this is all about. It's not about even the economy. It's about socially reengineering America to be a uh, socialist paradise. It's in the word Marxism. Sometimes people have trouble expressing that word when they're talking about you just use the word progressive to describe Democrats. There's nothing progressive about them. If anything, they're regressive. Uh, they're driving right. this economy back uh, 50 years. Uh, they are destroying uh, this country, and that's their intent. Uh, the latest NBC News report on uh, President Trump was that the U.S. military, in conjunction with a number of Marxist organizations, nonprofits, are trying to figure out how to supplant civilian control of the U.S. military with a, a different form of supervision uh, and, and control because they're afraid that, that Donald Trump is going to win the election and guess what? Actually abuse his power and they don't want that while they're watching Joe Biden ransack this country and the Marxist Dems who make up not only the Democrat Party, but also the deep state. Uh, they're savaging this country and our legacy media, the national media, uh, the Republican Party for crying out loud, is walking around saying, well, we, I don't know if we want to say Marxist or we want to say totalitarian. Well, you better believe we want to say it because that's exactly who they are. Adam, I'll give you the last word here. 
Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's what it's all about. It's a technocratic rule, ruled by NGOs, ruled by bureaucrats, not even the political point, well, appointees. Look, uh, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin is still in the hospital. The, no one knew that he was uh, out of uh, out of the office for a whole week. His, even his deputy secretary didn't know, uh, for God's sake. And that's that's how maddening this is. This is why this election is so important, is because we have to get control of the government in the hands of people who are supposed to be running the government, our elected representatives, our appointed political people. And it's it, this is the problem when you have absentee leadership in the White House. Yeah, it, it's actually, I think, uh, I would call it a, a, a puppet presidency. Uh, there are little Potemkin villages that are supposed to be the D Department of Defense, uh, HHS, whatever it may be. Uh, and all of the secretaries are just little pretend secretaries. They're cardboard cutouts, and then they have people well uh, beneath them and probably outside the uh, the departments actually running the joint. Uh, everyone else is just uh, there for a photo op. Uh, Adam, we thank you very much for being with us and come back soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Well, thousands of Palestinian pro-Hamas demonstrators uh, taking on the White House over the weekend, shaking a security fence, hurling a doll soaked in red paint as part of a massive demonstration, urging, of course, a ceasefire in Gaza. That would be a ceasefire by Israel, of course. At one point, the pro-Hamas crowd tried to breach the White House fence. Let's bring in columnist, author of the uh, permanent coup, how enemies, foreign and domestic, targeted the American president, Lee Smith. Lee, great to have you with us, and thanks so much. I have to say what we witnessed over the weekend uh, with the Secret Service absolutely overwhelmed. They weren't prepared for thousands and thousands of pro-Hamas terrorist uh, demonstrators uh, to attack the, the White House. Uh, and how could that be in the middle of the nation's capital? Your thoughts? Well, I mean, these are, you know, the, the, there's a few things. The first thing is that this is indicative of a split in the Democratic Party, right? These are, the, these are progressive voters. Yeah. These are progressive activists, or at least half of them, right? There's a, there's a large core here of people who do not belong in this country, people who are not from this country, people who are on student visas and other sorts of visas. They're not on green cards. They're definitely not U.S. citizens. But of course, we do have a number of U.S. citizens as well who have been naturalized, who are pro-Hamas, pro-terror, pro-Al-Qaeda. So this really gives an, uh, this, this, this really sort of gives a very good picture of where we are right now as a country. And these people, of course, believe that the progressive party that Joe Biden is the platform that's going to continue to help them transform the United States of America. And by the way, when I say that the Democratic Party is split, I'm not saying that there is a normal part of the Democratic Party. There are a number of different things that are going on here. It's not that there are normal Democrats who want good things to happen for the country. It's just a split in the party between the pro-Hamas between the pro-Hamas uh, component of the party and other components of the party. Now, you, Lee, you and I have known each other a long time, and you know I'm, I'm pretty plain-spoken, sometimes to a fault. But yeah. I really, you use the word progressive, and you know I have immense respect for both your intellect and, and, and your great work as a journalist and author. But when we use the word progressive to describe terrorists, uh, pro-terrorists, uh, demonstrations at the White House, when we use the word progressive to talk about labor unions, when we talk about progressive to describe uh, these indoctrinated uh, uh, professors in academia, and when we use progressive to describe the Democrat Party, we're ignoring reality. These, these are all Marxist-influenced and indoctrinated groups within our society right now. This is not the Democratic Party of old. This is a Democrat party that is held hostage uh, and uh, has been captured by the Marxists in this in this society of ours. And there's no, I, I don't understand the aversion, frankly. I, I don't understand the aversion to national media, aside from, from the fact there are Marxist, dim, globalist uh, uh, owned media talking straight. What's, you know, they are, these are Marxists. This is a Marxist uh, uh, 
Biden regime. Our children are being indoctrinated by Marxists in public school and universities. You're thinking. I use the word progressive to speak not just about Maoist, because it's not just Marxist. It's really Maoism, right? It's that component of, of, of Marxism, because it has so much to do with race. And this is what Mao, this is why they, Mao was so appealing in the 1960s, right? Uh, I'm talking about components of Maoism. I'm talking about components of Palestinianism. I'm, uh, I'm including components of pro pro terror movements around the world, including the Iranians and their different factions, the Houthis. Remember, these people were not just support out there supporting Hamas. They were also out there supporting the Houthis, right? Who are closing down shipping lanes to uh, to threaten uh, to threaten global markets, right? This is what I mean by progressive. I'm not talking about, well, people who have gone a little farther than maybe Woodrow Wilson would have gone. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a uh, I'm talking about a very large movement that has existed in this country for a long time. Some of its influences are foreign, as I said, like Maoism, like Palestinianism. There are other components, however, that are that are very, very American. So that's what I mean when we're dealing when I say progressivism. It's not to uh, it's not to use euphemisms to make them seem like legitimate parts of our constitutional republic. They're they're not right. Just like John Brown was not. John Brown was not a progressive. John Brown was a terrorist. So that's what I'm speaking about. I'm trying to include all the different components. And Lou, like you, I'm extremely concerned about what this means. And I think a very important thing for people on our side, for Republicans and conservatives, who I'm, I'm sorry to say, I, I, I think have, have been rather uh, rather weak on foreign policy to the extent they may not understand who, who Donald Trump, a president that they elected, and they supported really stands for right understandably so many bad things have happened in our country that many people uh, our our colleagues our friends relatives say our problem it's not abroad our problem is not in iran our problem is not in beijing our problem is not in gaza our problem is right here in the united states and while that's true Let's remember who the people who are our problems here are partnered with around the world. They're partnered with the Chinese Communist Absolutely. Party. They're partnered and, with the and, regime. And I think, Lee, and, right? They're partnered with the Palestinians. Yeah, the, the Palestinian issue is one uh, element of all that's going on here. But they're Marxist, and, and there should be no mistake about it. Those who are... Uh, supporting the Palestinian uh, uh, Hamas group. Uh, by the way, where, why don't we say the word? Uh, they're Iranian supported. Without Iran, there is no Hamas. There is no Hezbollah. There are no Houthis, uh, and they're certainly not able to launch, uh, you know, guided missiles uh, at one of our U.S. Navy ships. They're Marxist, and that is the international. Uh, it, uh, what holds them together uh, across the world, the globe. But the reality is, and everybody needs to understand this on caucus day, that when you vote Democrat, you're voting Marxist. And it's that straightforward and simple because that's exactly who people uh, are, permanent bureaucracy, the uh, Biden administration, and drive the Democrat party. Uh, you get the last word here, Lee. Well, I would just add, that, Lou. I would just say, if you're voting, if you're voting Democrat, you're voting for, uh, you're voting for pro-Hamas mobs all around the country. Let's remember what that really looks like. People think that globalism looks like Klaus Schwab in his uh, Star Wars co costume. No, no, no. Globalism looks like mobs who have nothing to do with the United States marching in our cities and across college campuses across the country. And this is what the Democrats have brought to the United States. This is what it means yeah. to utterly transform the United States. That's what globalism is. That's what Marxism is. That's what pro-Palestinianism is. Lee, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Uh, Lee Smith, as always, great to see you. And uh, it's not too, too late in the year to wish you a, a happy new year. Happy New Happy Year, New Lee. Year. Thanks for being with us. And as we begin our second week here on Lou Dobbs tonight on Frank's Speech, Lindell TV, and all of the uh, 
the other platforms, including Rumble and Apple TV. I want to thank all of you for tuning in, and I extend another thank you to the rest of you tuning in on Twitter, Facebook, Rumble, as I said. Over the weekend, I was looking at some of your comments on Rumble and couldn't help, uh, well, laughing out loud, and I have to share some of my favorites, if I may, right now. Patrick, uh, 30, 370Z, writing, Lou, I will sleep a little better seeing you once again. And thank you for that. Judith Jones writing, what wonderful news. I love Lou Dobbs so much that I named my cat after him. Fox has been circling the drain since they let him go, calling Arizona seal my fate with Fox so tired of all the manufactured fear on television. Judith, I promise you, there's uh, nothing manufactured here. We bring it straight. And we, uh, by the way, take close, pay close attention uh, to our viewers and our audience. And we appreciate your comments uh, very much. Uh, last but not least, I think this one might be uh, among the best. This one from Dr. Zorbo writing, quote, nice to see Mr. Dobbs again. As a side note, back in the 80s, I once got a promotion at a job because I mentioned in a planning meeting that I wanted to have Lou Dobbs baby. Uh, at least I think that's why I got the promotion. Thank you for all of your nice comments and words. Uh, and I read through all of them. I read them all the time and will continue to do so. A programming note uh, for all of you joining us here on Lou Dobbs tonight. Uh, please join us seven days a week for the Great America Show podcast available on platforms, uh, all the podcast platforms. Uh, that's uh, the Great America Show podcast. We'll be right back. To celebrate the new year, we're having the biggest sale ever on overstock clearance and brand new products. For example, save 60% on our Goose Down comforters, the best comforters ever. They go perfectly with our MyPillow bed sheets and duvet covers. Save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels. They're made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Our initial quantities are extremely low, so get them now before they go. Our seasonal flannel sheets are finally in. You save up to 50% and they sell out fast every year, so order now. They're truly the best flannel sheets you'll ever sleep on. Or save up to 80% on all our clearance items. And this is where it gets even better. For a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all MyPillow products. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. Looks like you've been sleeping well. Megan, he's back. The my pillow guy. And you're looking good. I'm still feeling good. Well, just when you thought it couldn't get any better, we've got the best pillow ever, my pillow 2.0. <gasps> when I invented my pillow, it had everything you'd ever want in a pillow. Well, now there's new technology that makes it even better. My pillow 2.0 has my patented fill combined with a cooling fabric with temperature regulating thread. My pillow 2.0 is truly the next generation of my pillow. Now's the time to go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use the promo code to save 50% on your MyPillow 2.0. Not only that, for a limited time, your entire order ships absolutely free. You're sleeping even better. And cooler, too. And you're looking good. Feeling good. I knew you would. MyPillow.com Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm here to tell you about my new product from MyPillow. Towels that actually work. Watch this absorbency test. Here's another towel that we randomly went out and bought. Here's one of my towels with a nice design. I don't know if you can see this, but you could line a swimming pool with this. I mean, this is crazy. Get rid of it. Towels that actually work. What a concept. I'm interrupting this commercial to let you know you can get our six piece My Towels, regular $69.98, now only $29.98. Or you can save 25% on our brand new kitchen towels, made with the same technology as our famous My Towels. Also, we have bath sheets, bath towels, washcloths, hand towels, and so much more. And the best part, with your promo code, your entire order ships absolutely free. So go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen. Use that promo code to get deep discounts on all My Towels. And for a limited time, your order ships absolutely free. 
Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new product, My Coffee. I get products all the time from entrepreneurs for my new platform, MyStore.com. And when I tried My Coffee for the first time, I was blown away. It is the best coffee I've ever had in my life. I spent the last four months doing my due diligence, and this family-owned business micromanages every step from the fields to the cup to ensure the best quality coffee you're ever gonna have. It starts with the beans that are grown in Honduras. Honduras' volcanic soil and humid climate make the perfect growing conditions for coffee plants, which produce the best beans ever. Then each batch is tested for its aroma, taste, and other aspects to meet the highest standards in the coffee industry. And after that, it goes into production, which is all done right here in the USA. It's like you're getting that small batch specialty coffee, but delivered right to your front door. So go to mystore.com or call the number on your screen, use the promo code and you'll get your very own My Coffee for 25% off. You guys all know that I've traveled the country for the past year and a half. I've stayed in hundreds of hotels. I've tried every coffee out there. Well, some of the coffees have that terrible aftertaste, some that leave me jittery, or I get an upset stomach. Well, my coffee is different. It's the richest, smoothest, best coffee I've ever had. My coffee comes in a variety of flavors. You get them ground or whole bean, plus it's certified organic and non-GMO. I guarantee it'll be the best coffee you've ever had. So go to mystore.com or call the number on your screen. Use your promo code and you'll get my coffee for 25% off. And I'm going to give you deep discounts on all my store products. That's mystore.com. It's my new platform for USA entrepreneurs. Please order now. As temperatures are plunging across the country, Republicans are turning up the heat on Joe Biden and his administration with a series of impeachment efforts that are, in point of fact, picking up momentum. Missouri Republican Congressman Jason Smith raising a point Friday about the president, saying if Biden has nothing to hide, why has he repeatedly lied about his knowledge and involvement in his family's overseas business dealings? Smith, who is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, one of the investigating committees, providing a long list of examples, uh, Smith noted that his committee found when Vice President Joe Biden frequently used aliases to correspond with a business associate of his son, Hunter Biden. Now, why would he do that? Does this seem above board? Uh, I, probably not. Neither do the Republicans. That's why they subpoenaed Hunter Biden as part of the impeachment inquiry. Hunter initially flouting that subpoena and then was threatened with contempt of Congress, and that threat seems to have changed Hunter's tune. According to his attorney now, Hunter is more than prepared and eager to sit for a private deposition. It's amazing what just a little pressure can accomplish. But that's not all. Congressman Matt Rosendale said he's strongly considering forcing an impeachment vote against Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. Rosendale said Austin failed Americans during the Chinese spy balloon incident, acted recklessly by hiding his hospitalization. Last week, he's still in the hospital, by the way, related to cancer treatment. Rosendale also citing U.S. airstrikes against Yemen, which he said Austin directed from the hospital. All of that without congressional approval. That sounds insane, but it's absolutely true. Politico confirming that Austin was intimately involved in the planning and the execution of that strike while still in the hospital. That's an interesting story, don't you think? It seems sort of like it's convenient to the narrative, uh, seeing he's bedridden and in the hospital. Well, last but not least, there is the impeachment effort against Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Oklahoma's Attorney General Jentner Drummond testifying during the first hearing. Drummond said that dealing with a crisis of illegal immigration has come at an extremely high cost for the state of Oklahoma. Texas has been forced to use National Guard troops to seize control of a public park that was a smuggling uh, corridor for drugs and illegals. All of these unprecedented measures for an unprecedented crisis, all of it manufactured by the Biden regime a direct result of Secretary Mayorkas 
not only failing to uphold the law, he's frustrated efforts to stem the tide of illegal immigration. Even moderates like Michigan Republican John James are coming aboard the train headed for Mayorkas. His tenure has radicalized them. James told Fox News that Secretary Mayorkas must be impeached and tried for treason. Well, Republicans have a mandate from their voters to hold Biden and his henchmen accountable. Let's hope that tough talk translates into tough action. The country needs it. So afraid are the elites of President Trump's return to the White House, they are preemptively crafting, conspiring to build plans to frustrate him. Uh, they've decided the only way to save democracy, quote unquote, is to destroy it. That's the gist of a new report from NBC News, a loose knit network of public interest uh, far left groups and lawmakers quietly devising plans to try to stop any effort by the president when he wins the presidency to expand his presidential powers. They're preparing a pretext of, uh, for their own abuse of power to ensure democracy doesn't die in darkness. That's their expression. They lovingly strangle it in the dead of night. There's a term for this. Mirror politics attribute to enemies precisely what you plan to do. Accuse another of plots justifying your own coup. A strategy practiced by Marxists, uh, including Marxist stem President Barack Obama and his shadow puppet now, Joe Biden. The Marxist Dems and the Democrat Party they've run have more in common with Bolsheviks than they do with America. There's no doubt Joe Biden is a compromised president. We now know, thanks to the infamous laptop and subsequent investigations by House Republicans, Hunter Biden was selling access and influence when Joe was vice president of the United States. And not only did Hunter and Joe influence Petal, they enriched themselves while colluding with our country's chief political and perhaps military rival, the Chinese communists. So now that he's president, it hasn't been a surprise to watch Joe Biden capitulate to the Chinese communists at every turn. I mean, every turn. There isn't an exception. And if we can, if we can trust Joe Biden to do anything, it's uh, to know that he will obey orders from Beijing. Here's the latest example. Over the weekend, the freedom-loving people of Taiwan electing a, a new president, uh, Li Ching Te, campaigning heavily on Taiwan independence. Instead of backing Ching Te, Biden shockingly pumped the brakes on any idea of a free Taiwan. On your screen is a video of Joe Biden as he was leaving the White House Saturday morning. The White House press corps stopping him, asking Biden about Taiwan's newly elected president. Biden's response was very direct. We do not support independence of Taiwan. Just like his Chinese Communist Party masters told him to say, it looks like the CCP has kept Biden on a tight leash ever since he made this statement a few months ago back in September. What should Chinese President Xi know about your commitment to Taiwan? We agree with what we signed on to a long time ago, and that there's a one China policy and Taiwan makes their own judgments about their independence. We are not moving, we're not encouraging them being independent. We're not, let, that's their decision. But would U.S. forces defend the island? Yes, if in fact there was an unprecedented attack. Well, quite the reversal. We expect nothing, uh, nothing else from the uh, capitulator in chief. Let's bring in one person, the CCP, we would hate to see back in the White House. Former White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro joining us today. Uh, and Peter, uh, it's uh, it's great to have you back with us. So These are certainly uh, interesting time. <laughs> yeah, they certainly are, and they seem to get more interesting by the day. Uh, let's start with Iowa. Everybody else is. So why don't we start with Iowa? And the president is. Uh, the last I looked at the last two polls, he was thirty and forty points up. Meanwhile. The, the national left-wing media has decided, you know, this will be a disaster for President Trump if he doesn't doesn't get more than half the vote. Uh, your reaction to what we're we're watching in Iowa and in yeah, the national media, uh, as always? Yeah, certainly we're we're familiar with uh, a legacy media that is absolutely stacked 
the deck against the president, whether it's the far left, MSNBC, CNN, whether it's the ABC, CBS, Alphabet Networks, whether it's the Rhino Fox News, um, they're going to do everything they can and to spin, uh, but they're running out of time. You know, between now and the March 5th Super Tuesday set of primaries, that's the only chance they're going to have to take down Donald Trump. And what what really concerns me, Lou, is, is the trap that's been laid out uh, by, by the rhinos uh, in first New Hampshire and then uh, South Carolina. Those are the first two primaries. Remember, Iowa is just a caucus. It really has to had very much predicted in terms of who the nominee is. So that's a whole other story. But the problem with New Hampshire, which is next week, next Tuesday, um, is 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 full. first of all, it's not a Republican primary. You've got uh, independents are allowed to vote. And if you do the, the math, it's scary. It's like only 30 percent registered Republican, 40 percent independents. And then on top of that, it's a state where they have aggressively, the rhinos and the Democrats have aggressively worked to change party registration for Democrats in the primary. You can do that there as well. There may be as many as 10,000 Democrats voting crossover in a primary, which probably going to only have 200,000 votes. And then on as the third thing, they've got the, the dark night there in Chris Sununu is like a pure rhino globalist Bush Cheney guy who loves to send our men and women off uh, to die in foreign lands. Yeah, he's already all over you know, you, the, you, Ukraine and all of that. Um, and th th what they want to do, Lou, uh, there's 22 electoral votes at stake. It's, it's a proportional. It's not winner take all, proportional. They want to grab as many of those electoral votes as they can and try to hold Trump hostage to put in, God help us, Haley on the ticket. And then it rolls over uh, shortly thereafter into South Carolina, where Haley, the favorite daughter there, she used to be governor. I don't know if you know this, Lou, but <laughs> one of the big things she did there was spend a couple of hundred million dollars in taxpayer money to welcome with open arms the first assembly plant for communist China to come on to US soil. And remember, you know better than I, manufacturing plants on soil create jobs, assembly plants just bring in Chinese parts. So this is a trap, and um, I think it'll be, be fine by the time we get to Super Tuesday, but it's going to be interesting how it's all spun by the media. Well, it's interesting, too, to see President Trump uh, reminding everybody that whether is it a problem for Trump supporters today, uh, and uh, we both know that he means that, and the Trump supporters, I, I absolutely believe, will get to those caucuses no matter what. The yeah. intensity yeah. of his support, you know, aside from being 30 and 40 points ahead of everybody, the intensity of his support tells you that this man is uh, on his way. And I am fascinated by this uh, caucus because there's so many people have written about it, uh, whether it's Marine Dowd, whomever, they've had to put a coat on, you know, and actually go there with the people <laughs> and and find out what's happening. So there, it's a real, uh, a real <laughs> a free fall for them uh, societally. Uh, it, it, they're just, they're complaining about the weather. They're complaining about this and that. The entire left of this country, the Marxist Dems, you read their columns, you watch them on MSNBC, you listen to them on CNN. Yeah, you hear the, you know, you hear Jerry Nadler whining and moaning. These people are absolutely in depression. Now, I think most of them are mentally ill to begin with, but now they have, they have an onset of depression that is just remarkable. And guess what? The latest poll shows only 27% of Americans, Peter, 27% of Americans identify as Democrats. And that tells you a little bit uh, what's uh, what's behind wow. their morose uh, demeanor uh, and outlook. Well, look, uh, Trump has been a transformational president. And prior to the coming of Donald Trump in 2016, we had the Republican Party being the party of Wall Street. And we had the Democrat Party 
used to be in the party of Main Street, but it had morphed so much into the party of corporate money that we, we had the union, and neither party was representing uh, the mainstream and flyover country of this country. That's what MAGA is. That's the deplorables. That's what Donald Trump achieved. And that's what's so fearful of Donald Trump. The people who are trying to stop him are the ones who have controlled this country. It's the moneyed interests that have controlled this country, uh, led by the media in cooperation with the media. And uh, it's really a unicorn, black swan type of presidency that Trump did. And look, I, I was there from the beginning, Lou. You know this. I was one of only three senior White House officials with the president from the 2016 campaign all the way to the end. And I saw firsthand, and I've seen firsthand, everybody I served with, at least who was loyal to President Trump, has either dropped out along the way under pressure. You know, we lost Mike Flynn, a great American patriot, early on. We started with the Russia two impeachment trials. Now we've got President Trump facing 700 years in prison from people like Fonnie Willis, <laughs> who gave a million bucks to her boyfriend so he divorced his wife and take her off to Napa Valley. I mean, you can't make that stuff well, up. And the people, many people are no, disgusted. You, you know, that's, a, it. that's the great thing about it, Peter. What's that? That's that's the great thing about it. You can, you don't have to make anything up about yeah. what the Marxist Dems are doing in this country. They're so arrogant and so extraordinarily destructive. Uh, Fannie Willis, the district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia, is just one, unfortunately, of the examples of the people who are persecuting President Trump for now entering his ninth year. Peter Navarro, it's always great to see you. And Peter Navarro, great American, we thank you for being with us here on Lou Dobbs tonight. Thanks so much, my friend. Chairman Comer has said former President Trump has legitimate businesses while the Bidens do not. Let's bring in Center for Election Integrity Vice Chair, former Trump campaign National Press Secretary, uh, Hogan Gidley. Thank you for being with us. Appreciate it, Hogan. The president telling uh, his uh, his supporters in Iowa, don't mind that temperature. Uh, let's, uh, let's all get to the caucuses and have a good time. Uh, how do you think he's going to do today? Well, uh, Mike Huckabee used to tell me all the time there are two ways to run elections, unopposed and scared. And it looks like Donald Trump understands the latter, that he's acting as though he's 10, 20 points behind, when instead he's got a commanding lead. He wants to make sure people get out to the polls. I mean, they have something like 2,000 precinct captains. There are only about 1,600 precincts in the whole state, 400 training centers across Iowa. So he learned a lot from his time in 2016, and they have built out a massive network. And while so many of the other candidates we're trying to tout their organizations, and they've got some. Donald Trump has done an outstanding job getting his folks ready. Now, the cold will be a factor, but I think it's going to hurt the other candidates more so than Donald Trump, because you know better than most, Lou, that uh, Donald Trump supporters will crawl across broken glass, and that's what it's going to feel like when temperatures are negative 20, just to vote for him. Yeah, that's supposed to be just an expression, not a reality, as it is today in most of Iowa. <laughs> uh, we're talking about temperatures uh, below zero. We're talking about uh, minus uh, 20 in the in the real feel of, of that uh, wind and cold uh, that's hit them. It'll be interesting to see what the effect is on the uh, on the turnout. Well, one thing I do know, based on all the polling that I've seen, and we're talking about a president who's had 30 to 40 uh, points here uh, in the last polling. Uh, before today's caucus, uh, the intensity of uh, Trump supporters will get more of them to the caucuses than anybody imagines and fewer of the other candidates because they are all low intensity ca uh, uh, candidates, uh, whether it be Nikki Haley or whether it be uh, Governor DeSantis, uh, whomever they want to, to throw into the, uh, to the bucket there. Uh, so give us a sense of how you mentioned something very interesting about the, how great the ground game is there. Are we going to see that great ground game in New Hampshire and uh, everywhere else? It, will we be able to say of Donald Trump's campaign this year that he's got a great ground organization, a great get out the vote organization? 
it seems like they do at this point. Remember, Donald Trump has been around the block on this particular um, uh, campaign before. I mean, he's run for president already, whereas these other folks have run campaigns in their respective states, but nothing national quite like this. That's one reason Donald Trump is so far ahead is because he has the ability to kind of build um, coalitions around this country. New Hampshire, he has a good ground game. South Carolina. I mean, look, I was uh, in South Carolina for 17 years. Nikki was my governor, for heaven's sakes, and Trump's ahead on her by 30 points in her home state. So it looks like they have a lot of ground game. But look, you can't sell a bad product. So I don't care how many people you have on the ground. If no one likes the candidate, if they don't think the candidate can do the job, if they don't think the candidate can withstand the barrage and onslaught of the mainstream media of the deep state, then they're going to you know, not have those people and come out and support them. So Donald Trump is a good product, and he was successful as president of the United <laughs> States. And those policies that put the American people first are the ones they want back in place, and they know he can do it while everyone else is saying, I promise if you elect me, I promise I'll do that. But there's no guarantee, whereas you have a guarantee with Donald Trump. Yeah, I, I like your expression, a good product. Uh, he's a proven product. Uh, he's a great product. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a great president. I, I just, it's just funny to hear the campaign lingo uh, drift in there uh, when you start talking about a good, good product. I, I, because I, I don't see many good products uh, out there in the Republican, uh, uh, the, the Republican bevy of candidates. Uh, Nikki Haley, Rand, Rand Paul starting a never Nikki campaign. I never thought I'd see that one, but uh, it looks to me like the Republican Party is going to, to be providing some entertainment this year and some great results. Uh, you get the last word here. I think you're absolutely right. And when Rand Paul sees what so many of us see, that 43% of Nikki supporters say if it's down to Trump and Biden, they'll vote Biden. That's a telltale sign of really who her supporters and that base is. So Donald Trump, with his policies, well, that's his that's one that's one dumb base. Guys. I'll tell you that. Well, well, exactly. And so when you have the policies Donald Trump had, right, and they're proven to be successful, the onslaught of 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 the mainstream media and the deep state and people coming after him within the federal government, these three letter agencies, it's one thing to weather the storm. He did that. We didn't even know the extent of it, and he was still able to succeed on behalf of the American people. That's why I think he's set apart and he's unique as a candidate. So the tumult we face now, everyone else said, I'm Donald Trump's policies without his personality. I think his personality is exactly what this country needs right now to get her back on track and to protect the American people from a weaponized federal government. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and again, uh, any of you thinking remotely about voting for Joe Biden, the idea of you saying that you would like to have some more of that Biden uh, is something oh. no one would understand. Certainly no one in this audience would understand or, 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 uh, or yeah, tolerate. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks so much, well, Hogan. We appreciate it. Uh, hey, yes, Hogan? Just real quick, you know, I used to think Trump derangement syndrome was something we just kind of needled the left with as a joke. I think they're going to write medical journals uh -huh. on it one day. I think it's going to be a full on. They're going to get pills for it. I mean, this is ridiculous the way they hate this man. Well, you know, the, the poor darlings. I, I mean, you're you're talking about a, a, a social <laughs> phenomenon, but you're talking about also medical marbles. These people are mentally ill. Uh, they need treatment yeah. and they need help. And a sizable part of the budget, unfortunately, is going to rise as uh, the Trump administration uh, and President, uh, the 47th president, have to deal with their their needs, which are all mental and psychiatric. Uh, I think in uh, in large measure. Hogan, thanks for being with you're us. Right. In case you missed it, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul said Dr. Anthony Fauci should go to prison for his rampant dishonesty about the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. The Republican senator bashing Fauci for making one of the worst decisions in the history of the world during his years as President Biden's chief medical advisor. During a radio interview on WABC 770 AM, the Cats Roundtable, Senator Paul said this. Take a listen. He's never been held responsible for this. This is probably the worst decision ever made by a public health official in the history of time. For his dishonesty, frankly, he should he should go to prison. If you lie to Congress and you're dishonest and you won't accept responsibility.
And turning to the Federal Aviation Administration, it's looking to raise the number of physically and mentally handicapped workers in its ranks. We wish we could uh, tell you why they have made certain decisions, but we don't know. And it's not as if the U.S. government under President Biden is transparent. The FAA initiative to improve diversity and equity and inclusion includes recruiting workers suffering from severe intellectual disabilities, psychiatric issues, and other mental and physical conditions. What does that mean exactly? According to the agency's website, desirable disabilities include, quote, hearing, vision, missing extremities, partial paralysis, complete paralysis, epilepsy, severe intellectual disability, psychiatric disability, and dwarfism. Americans resting assured that Pete Buttigieg is raising the representation of the disabled. And that is good until you think about exactly what the FAA does with our air traffic control systems. And thank you for being with us tonight. Tune in for tomorrow's show, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. President Donald Trump's attorney, Jared Roberts, will be with us with the latest update on Trump's legal battles and attacks by the Marxist Dems. Also here with us tomorrow, political strategist, former campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. He'll be talking about the ongoing political persecution of President Trump. He knows a thing or two about political persecution. Also. Don't miss China and national security expert Gordon Chang. He'll be with us to talk about the rising threat of conflict with communist China. Mike Lindell's show begins right after these commercials. Please stay with us and you will enjoy Mike Lindell on the other side. Good night and God bless.